beszélhetünk-e önnek tartóztatásról, amikor aktív az önkielégítés és a pornózás vagy a szexuális fantázia? Lehetséges, hogy ez az aszexualitás csak éppen az aktuális partnernek, a másodlagos forrásnak szól? Well, no. Uh, the cerebral asexuality is total. Not only with the, with the intimate partner or life partner or secondary source, source of secondary supply. So when the cerebral is asexual, he does not respond to any sexual cues, sexual advances, courting by any uh, possible sex partner. So if he's homosexual, he's not responding to, to men or, or women, if he's lesbian, and if he's heterosexual, he's not responding to women. The, it's so extreme that the cerebral narcissist is, not al is also not responding to visual cues in living people. So for example, let's take an extreme situation, he would enter his hotel room and there would be a beautiful naked woman waiting for him in bed. He would not respond. He would not react. And this, of course, gives you the answer to porn, because he would react to pornography. If he saw the same woman that was in his bed, naked, in a movie, in a pornographic movie, he would react to her. He would have an erection, he would masturbate, and he would ejaculate, watching her, but on a movie, not as a... And this, again, comes to the issue of libido and thanatos. Pornography is a series of visual cues. It's usually fetishistic, disjointed visual cues, because the camera focuses on breasts, on vaginas, on, you know, it's extremely rare to see totality of bodies. Uh, um, about three quarters of pornography is organ-oriented. It, it focuses on organs. And well over half of uh, porn searches, searches related to porn on, on uh, pornographic websites and on search websites like Google, well over half, have to do with specific parts of the body, boobs, uh, feet, and so on. There's, there's a, a wonderful book called uh, A Billion Wicked Thoughts. A Billion Wicked Thoughts is a summary of all the searches about sex uh, in Google. And uh, tens, tens of millions, enormous database, hundreds of millions of searches. What people are looking for in sex. And based on, on that, we can learn a lot about the sexual preferences and so on. So pornography is dead. The essence of pornography is death. It's a pathologist's dream. It's autopsy. It's abduction. It's, uh, it's cutting the body to pieces. And the visual cues are dead visual cues, and the reaction is actually to these body parts, not to the totality. Actually, people find totality very disturbing in pornography. That's why they don't want people to talk so much. They don't want a storyline, a plot. They want to get to the point. They, they, don't, they rarely want to see full body sex, extremely rare. They prefer much more close-ups, zooms, zoom-ins, fade-outs, you know. The editing of pornography is very, very mechanical, impersonal, and therefore dead. Obviously, narcissists would prefer pornography to reality. I think the much more frightening question is why the majority of men, men, not women, prefer pornography to reality. That begins to be a very frightening question because we are seeing a trend where the majority of men prefer to consume pornography to actual real-life sex. And one of the reasons we think, based on the most recent research, is that pornography creates an addiction. The visual cues trigger the dopamine pathway and they, they get dopamine hits and it, it's absolute heroin, crack addiction, crack heroin. And so the, the pornography creates addiction. But the problem with pornography, it misrepresents sex. It converts sex into something impersonal, aggressive, and dead. And so in some sense, all men are driven by pornography to develop narcissistic sexuality. All men, not only narcissists, uh, they are developing narcissistic sexuality based on pornography. 
And this is extremely worrying. For example, we have studies that show that the more the man consumes pornography, the fewer the frequency of sex with his wife or intimate partner. Frequency deteriorates. And if his, his consumption goes to the sky, he stops having sex. He becomes cerebral. He becomes asexual. You know? So it's also part of how our civilization is becoming narcissistic. Practices that used to be exclusively narcissistic are now global and widespread. Casual sex, anonymous sex, pornography, masturbation, these used to be almost exclusively narcissistic activities. Well, not masturbation, but all the others. Used to be almost exclusively narcissistic activities. And now they, they are absolutely universal. They are total. Now, masturbation is a different story. That's why I'm putting it aside. Of course, masturbation has you know, always been universal. It's always been universal. But when the narcissist masturbates, it's not the same like a healthy person. When the narcissist masturbates, he is making love to himself. It's an autoerotic act, not a stimulatory physiological act. M majority of healthy people masturbate, uh, men and women. Women a bit less, but men and women masturbate. And when they masturbate, they do it essentially for physiological reasons. The fantasies that go with masturbation, ironically, are extremely primitive and basic. The fantasies that are not connected to masturbation, daydreaming, are much more complex, and they, they, they are more like erotic novel, more like Fifty Shades of Grey. So when women have fantasies, for example, that are not connected to sex, they would have a very elaborate story about meeting up, you know, the gorgeous stud and how he rapes them, and, and they will have a whole, a whole movie. But when they masturbate, they usually would have a, one element or two, and same with men. So mastur masturbation is essentially mechanical physiological stimulation of the genitals to obtain release. It's about physiological release, not with the narcissist. Narcissist, as usual, is opposite to healthy people. When he masturbates, he has very complex, elaborate, ornate fantasies which resemble books or movies when he masturbates. Daydreaming of the narcissist is extremely basic. I'm going to find a woman, I'm going to rape her. It's extremely basic. So it seems that the narcissist invests sexual energy and emotions, cathects his masturbation, but decathects, has no investment in sex with real people. And of course, consequently, sex with real people is not interesting for him, for the narcissist. Because no investment, no emotion, no imagination, no creativity, no... And many, many partners of narcissists describe sex with the narcissist as very boring, very mechanical, very... Because he's bored. It bores him. It's, it's, but when he has sex with himself, first of all, he has sex with a very interesting person, you know, with an amazing person. And uh, he is free. He can create any fantasy, any story, any... And a lot of narcissist sexuality, unfortunately, that I must say, that is society's fault, not the narcissist's fault, a lot of this sexuality is stigmatized, is considered perverted, deviant, uh, taboo. That is not the narcissist's fault, that's society's fault. No sexuality should ever be wrong. There's no such thing as wrong. If it exists, it's not wrong with, ex let's say, the exception of not hurting other people. Not hurting other people and everything to be consensual, in agreement. So, of course, pedophilia, for example, hurts people and is not consensual. I'm not talking about this. But between adults, I mean, everything should be. And society stigmatizes. So the narcissist retreats, retreats. His fantasies would be would be widely considered sick, perverted, deviant, and so he's ashamed. He's ashamed to share. We'll come to it. You know. And uh, the cerebral narcissist when asexual don't go to prostitute or don't masturbate at all? Nothing. No, masturbates, of course. Masturbate. Masturbates, has fantasies, um, watches porn and masturbates for masturbation, watches porn. 
but uh, that has no contact with the life body mm -hmm. of any kind. Yeah. Not sex workers, nothing. The asexual phase is absolutely asexual. So, I mean, asexual in the sense with another person. One of the reasons the cerebral narcissist finds it pretty easy uh, to not have sex with other people and for very, very, very long periods of time. Uh, I went through a period of 15 years without sex, without any contact with another person. So one of the reasons this is easy is because the narcissist of both types, somatic and cerebral, is auto-erotic. In other words, he finds himself as the most exciting, arousing sexual object. It would also explain phenomena like incest, or like pedophilia, or like, uh, well, it would also explain many of these behaviors, because for example, incest. Incest is having sex with someone who is 50% you. If you are having sex with your child, your child is 50% you. It's autoerotic, totally. Pedophilia, the narcissist is a child. If he has, he's a child, mentally. If he has sex with a child, he's actually having sex with himself. And homosexuality. Homosexuality, the narcissist is, an, is a male, male for example. He has sex with a male, he's having sex with himself. <clears throat> so homosexual experiences among, among um, uh, narcissists are much more widespread than in the general population. So autoeroticism is the key to the narcissist's sexuality and therefore makes it very easy for him to retreat. He is Narcissist is self-sufficient in everything. Narcissist doesn't need any other people. He doesn't need emotions. He doesn't need sex. He, doesn't need, he is totally self-sufficient. And so if, if he cannot get sex from out, or doesn't want to get sex from outside, it's okay. He can supply his own sex. If he, he doesn't need emotions. He do, so he's, the narcissist is really an autonomous, totally autonomous unit with zero dependence on other people, except for narcissistic supply, which is why he hates and abuses his sources of supply. Because this is the only threat to his independence. He hates it. He hates that he's dependent on other people for supply.